Okay, so we're given a width and an area of a rectangle, and we're asked to find the length. Now, the length will be the area divided by the width. But it says each of the measurements are rounded to the nearest 10. So each of these could be um, slightly different before they're rounded. Now it wants the minimum length. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out the upper and bound for both of these. So I'm going to do my line, and we have 1,230 in the middle. The next one down it could have been is 1,220. Next one up it could have been is 1,240. I'm going to do my lines to find the lower and upper bound. So 1, 2, 2, 5 is halfway between these two numbers. So that's our lower bound, and 1, 2, 3, 5 is our upper bound. I'll do exactly the same thing for the other measurement. It's slightly harder here because it's a much bigger measurement. So it's going to be 9, 8, 5, 30, and 9, 8, 5, 50. And then our halfway marks. So our lower bound here is going to be 9, 8, 5, 3, 5, and 9, 8, 5, 4, 5. Okay, so what we want to do is work out well, which one, what configuration of these two numbers here and these two numbers here will give us the smallest answer. So to get the smallest answer, I want the smallest possible area, so it gets it nice and small. But when I divide, it makes it even smaller if the thing I'm dividing by is as big as possible. So the area uh, I want is the lowest it can be, which is 98535. And to make the answer as small as possible, I want the width to be as big as it could be, which is 1, 2, 3, 5. And let's work that out on my calculator. So 98535 divided by 1, 2, 3, 5, which is 79.7854251. It wants it to one des uh, sorry, to four decimal places. So 79.7854. Now, if you're not sure about which way around to put them, lower bound, upper bound, just try the different combinations um, and see which one gives you the smallest answer. Um, so for if you're looking for the minimum possible length, it's lower bound divided by upper bound. Similarly, if you're looking for the maximum length, it would be upper bound divided by lower bound. So for adding and multiplying, it's nice and easy. If you're looking for the upper bound of the answer, just pick both upper bounds. But for dividing and subtracting, it's slightly different. The second thing has to be kind of the opposite. So if you're looking for the lower bound, the first one is going to be the lower bound, and the second one will be the upper bound.